Then my cars. Oh, hi. Uh, yeah. It's a pretty busy day, pretty chaotic, and we're gonna be doing some Railway Empire here in a few minutes. So hang tight, and game stream starts now. Oh, that's a way to start a stream off. Awesome. Easily top five best intros to a game. Ever. That's, that's what you need to do, kid. You sound like a cokehead. That's a shot. Do you imagine if they had this kind of technology back in those days? To basically tell them, hey, this is probably not a good idea to build your track here. Maybe kind of like not be a complete dumbass. This is both impressive and disturbing. Alright, bye bye! Oh, I killed myself! Dang it! How do I jump? Jump. What the? Did I seriously just do that? Dude. I think I just unlocked an Easter egg. That's pretty dope. You. Dang it. Didn't make it in. My name is Ryan. Play the game or what? You do not get to sing. I'm gonna bring the radio with me. Is that cool? No? Okay. By the way, I used to jam out to this song all the time when I was playing Sonic back in the day. Hello, sirs. Don't mind me. I'm just an enemy tank passing through your territory, blowing shit up. What it? I look like a Karen. Oh wait, that's the manager. The Karen is the manager. Until next time, guys. I am the storm. And it's the rest of the world that has to run for cover. I didn't say it was your fault. I said I was blaming you. Where the fuck is Gordon Ramsay's lamb sauce? Until next time, guys. It's 2020. The boomers fucked up. And now everything's on fire. Just when they think they have the answers, I change the channel. Nice try, Fox News. Goodbye. Always get the number 34 extra spicy. If you want to win the money, just do what the koala says. Organized crime is such a pain in the ass. There's a reason I didn't become a fed. Whenever someone asks you if you're a god, you say yes. Now performing at the Vans Warp Tour. Monkey Knife Fight with special guests, Poison Alligator Interstellar, and Nomd Fireraptor. Performing at the Vans Warp Tour. Medieval Minecraft with special guests, Abstract Pikachu, Pikachu, 
rewarded iguana and bite-sized pandas. Okay, I'm back. Hi. Alright, so this next part was supposed to take place last Tuesday, and I do apologize for, you know, that whole thing, but stuff happened, stuff came up. I couldn't get to it in time, so we just had to call it off uh, at that particular point in time. But we're going to do that right now. Uh, I don't suppose it's much of a secret anymore at this point. Uh, I run both the Game Stream and Galactic Blue Twitch channels, as well as the Galactic Blue and Game Stream Twitter channel or Twitter profiles, as well as my own personal profile. I also am the president and co-founder of Galactic Blue, and as such, I have been working tirelessly over the last several months, especially since the pandemic hit, um, to kind of up my game, up the amount of services that we can provide to potential customers as well as to clients. So part of that is learning Python and C++, both very popular backend uh, programming languages, uh, particularly used in either web applications or mobile applications, and also you know gaming. So all of that said. Part of my training over the last few months has been learning to code different games in both C++ and Python. Uh, what I'm about to show you is some of the stuff that we've been working tirelessly on for the last few months, and I think you're going to actually enjoy it quite a bit. So let's go ahead and pull that up now. So, the code that I am showing you right now, and I'm going to turn my screen off, the, uh, this thing right here, no, not that, this thing, no, not that either, that, yeah, I'm going to turn all that off for a couple quick seconds, because it's kind of in the way at the moment, but yeah. Here we go. So what I'm showing you now is code for a rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock text game. This is what I call version 1. The code up here, this is all in Python by the way. Code up here is calling in the random integer uh, module for Python. This is calling an array and labeling it as a variable t. So the variable or the array lists five things. Rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock. I have a hard time saying lizard tonight. The computer variable right here that's being called calls on a random random integer, I'm having a hard time with words, p 
period tonight. Wow. Not a very good time to be having trouble with words. Um, random integer from anywhere from 0, which would be right here, to 4, which would be right here. Um, and labeling it to the t variable. Or it's calling the t variable, which is the array, and calling a random integer. Right here is basically saying that the player is false. Now while the player is false, it's going to put in a text input in the console asking the player to put in rock, paper, scissors, lizard, lizard Spock. It's going to ask for one of those five. Here, it's basically saying if the player is equal to the computer, if the computer makes the same decision that the player makes, so for instance, if the computer says Spock and the player says Spock, then it's going to say it's a tie, let's play again. Else, if the player is choosing rock, then it goes into the, okay, paper beats rock, spots beat rock, Spock beats rock, but rock beats scissors and lizard. And then player, or player selects paper, same thing, player selects scissors, same thing, player selects lizard, and Spock. Now, the fallback is that the player has to select one of those five. It can't just type in a random thing, otherwise it comes up with this error. In ballot play, please check your spelling or choose one of the options and try again. I need to fix that, by the way. There we go. Choose one of the options and try again. And then once the player's choice has been selected, it chooses the player back to false, and then does another randomizer for the computer. So it basically selects another option for the computer, so it's always changing, so you're not getting the same thing over and over and over and over and over. Not predictable, basically. So I'm going to actually show you this in practice. So you're going to play it right now. And it should pull up in the console. There it is. Rock, paper, scissors, scissors, spot. I'm going to, for funsies, select OWL. Nope, invalid play. Please check your spelling or choose one of the options and try again. So what if I choose rock, but it's lowercase? Same thing. Check your spelling, choose one of the options, try again. That's because it is case sensitive. We have not yet decided, not yet figured out how to get it to where it's not case sensitive. So, you know, bear with us on that one. And plus, I have a version two that I'm gonna show anyway that kind of nullifies that whole thing. So, yeah. Um, so, let's go ahead and choose Spock. And what do you know? Spock smashes scissors, you in. Awesome. So now, I'm going to go ahead and show off version 2. Version 2 kind of takes away the whole typing it in thing. So here, again, it's calling for the random integer. But here, 
it's calling in another module for Python called Tinkter. Or Tinkter, or whatever the heck it's called. Um, so, Tinkter is basically Python's you know, game module loader. Basically allows someone to code a Python program and load it up in a visual uh, GUI format or GUI. There's a stats array which will come in handy here in a few minutes. So now if here's the function that calls for the winner. We still have the T array rock, paper, scissors, lizards, rock. Uh, but this time, as you can see, I don't know if you can see it very well on your screen. There's lowercase r for rock, p for paper, c for scissors, or s for scissors, rather. Instead of the variable computer, we're calling the variable throw, but it's the, still the same. It's t random int from 0 to 4. Now, here's where all the winnable scenarios are listed. We're not going, hey, if player selects rock, then here's a list of things. If player selects scissors, here's a list of things. No, we're basically outright saying, if any of these scenarios are true, Append a W on the stats and select the result you win paper or player beats computer da da. If the throw or the computer selection equals or is the same to the player selector or call, then append a D to the stats array and change the result to it's a draw. In any other scenario, append an L and say you lose, sorry, computer beats player. Global output, output config, text equals result. And what that does is it changes the output to the result. So it changes the output to this, or this, or this, which I'll show you here in a bit. Here are the five options as functions. Basically, all these functions are doing is it's calling this main function right here, but it's passing in the options. So if you select paper, it's going to pass in the paper option. If you select lizard, it's going to pass in the lizards, uh, lizard option. Window variable is basically the Tikinter uh, GUI interface. So wizard window title basically gives you the title of the window or the GUI module which we're going to label rock, paper, scissors, or third spot. Because that's what it is. There's going to be a scissors button. There's going to be a rock button. There's going to be a paper button. A lizard button. A spock button. And then there's the output right here. And by default, it's going to come up with the text what you call. This right here basically packs or uh, puts in the buttons top to bottom. So it goes do 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 rather than just have them all over the place. Now in the event that the window is closed, then it takes the stats array that's up here 
and count how many W's, how many L's, and how many D's there are. Actually, I think it just basically ignores the D's altogether. So if there are more L's than D's, the text that's going to show up here is basically going to say you lose the series. If L's, if the amount of L's are the same as the amount of W's, it's going to say that the series ends in a draw. In any other scenario, it's going to say you win. So, all that said, let's go ahead and see it in practice. I don't know why it does that, but whatever. And there you can see the window. I don't know how well you can see it, but yeah. Oh, you can't see it. Hold on one second. Oh, it's not giving me the option, is it? Give me one second, guys. You may just have to go display capture. Let's try that. See if that worked. Yay! It worked. All right. So you can see right here. You got scissors, rock, paper, lizard, and spot. And then the what you call. Now if I select paper, dang it, you lost. Lizard eats paper, which it does. Lizard eats the paper. Rock, rock beats lizard. However, select lizard, computer selected scissors. Scissors therefore beats lizard because the scissors cuts lizard's head off. Spock beats scissors. And then you can see here the series ended in and in a draw. We're good to go there. So that is what we've been working on, well, part of what we've been working on for like the last few months. Um, another one that I'm really excited to show you is a bit of a thing I like to call, well, I don't like to call it, but it is basically known as tic-tac-toe. I won't go into the trenches too much on this one. So we'll just kind of jump right into it. I mean, Pierre's not very smart in this one. I'm still working on that. Yeah. But another one is we've the Mad Libs. So I know there's not a whole lot of people watching right now. In fact, I don't think anybody's watching this right now. So you're probably just watching this after the fact. So basically going to go ahead and just cut this down to just two random options for Mad Libs. Right, we're just going to have the one option. 
Maybe this one right here. So, we're going to enter a silly name of Poopies. Unrealistic profession. Salsa taster. Country of Belize. Another silly name. We go with Simp. Color blue. Adjective. Hmm. Adjective of drunk. Adverb. Foolishly. Third silly name of Dylan. Fourth silly name of Hey, 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 hey. Facial feature scar. U.S. City, go Austin, last silly name we promise, Chipsies, action or verb, Action is sleepy or sleep. Noun. Glass. Older action star, action actor. Jean Claude Van Damme. Noun. Fight. Alright, so here's the Mad Lib on this one. Meet our new hero, Poopies, an superintelligent salsa taster. A run-in with the Belize military leads him to create his alter ego Sip, a blue drunk giant capable of great destruction. He foolishly battles the military with his girlfriend Did It. Eventually, it is discovered that our hero's longtime colleague, Rehe -he -he, distinguished by his scar, is trying to turn Simp into a weapon, leading to a climactic, if pointless, battle in downtown Austin with an evil version of the giant, same giant alter ego called Chippies, or Chipsies. Eventually, the enemy is subdued by sleeping him with a glass. Wow. In the final reel, Jean-Claude Van Damme appears to propose joining him in a fight. That last part actually sounds pretty cool. Anyway, that, that's Mad Libs. It's a very simple, very straightforward. Basically, it says, you know, input all the stuff. It puts in all the stuff. Uh, based on what you put in. But yeah, very, very simple, very easy to program. Um, not something I'm particularly proud of, but at the same time, it's pretty cool. Anyway, that's all the Python stuff. I'm going to jump into a Hangman game.
So five tries to guess, try and guess the word. So it's got five letters. I'm going to go with N as one of the, oh, nope, never mind. Okay, so almost immediately I know which one this is. Yay! So basically, it's asking you to put in letters and it pulls a random value from this list right here. Yeah, I'm clearly not in the best of condition to be talking about this stuff because I'm A, tired, and B, tipsy. So, yeah. It's nine hours, oh my gosh. Okay, so. Uh, I think it's safe to say that we're not gonna have any further giveaways today. Just a punch. Anyway, so let's go ahead and switch this back over. Yep. Bring this back, bring all this back. Yay. Yeah. Switch back to me. Alright. All right. So, that was a fun little thing. But anyway, um, so, probably the next thing I'm going to do is brew some more coffee. Because I'm starting to feel this nine hour thing. It's kicking my butt. I can tell. Um, and we're going to jump right into some Railway Empire. So, don't go anywhere. I'll be back. And, until I do come back, I'm going to try this again. Shabbat Shalom, bitches! Charles Baron, AWTF Production. <laughs> <laughs>